Right, as we heard earlier this morning, Immigration New Zealand has granted border exemptions to some offshore musicians to participate in the Summer Winery Tour, 29, I think. And as uh, all rugby fans are well aware, immigration accommodations have been made for the Australian rugby team, plus the English netball team and the West Indies and Pakistan cricket teams and the America's Cup teams. But for experienced seasonal fruit pickers, even from completely COVID-19 free Samoa, they haven't had a single case, our borders remain shut. Joining us to unpack why this is such a big problem, even put at risk hundreds of tonnes of fresh fruit uh, and jobs for Kiwis is Francine Perry, founder of South Auckland-based strawberry growers Perry's Berries. Morning Francine, you've never been on live telly before have yeah, you? Never. You're going to be great, so it's just you and me. <laughs> I've asked Wendy not to heckle because she's quite rude like that, so we're going to be good. Yeah. Right, have you, got, have you got strawberries ready to go? Yeah, no, we've been picking for about three weeks. Okay, and who's picking? Um, we've got a small team at the moment but that will increase very quickly and it's um, a team of Samoan people and Kiwis. And the Samoan people are already in the country, obviously. Correct, okay. yes. How many people would normally come in? How many fruit pickers come in? You mean across the whole industry? Yeah, yeah. About 14,000. 14,000? Yes, yeah. Wow, yeah. and what happens if you don't get them? What happens to fruit picking? What happens to horticulture generally? It's not just fruit, it's veggies, the whole lot. What happens to it? Well, we won't get harvested. The crops will rot on the ground and prices will increase really quickly. As well as which, there'll be a lot of loss of work for our packers because if we don't have fruit to pack, we don't have work for them. And presumably there's just downstream domino after domino falling, right? Absolutely. Because lots of things happen with the strawberries. They go into ice cream, they go into jam, they go... But it, so no one will be able to access that fruit. No, well, that will just mean more imports from other countries who will benefit from our situation. And, you know, last time we withdrew off the market domestically, um, the prices doubled overnight. So, you know, if you have fruit, fruit rotting, then you, there's a problem for prices domestically. Do you run a very real risk of having rotten fruit? So, so, so losing what sort of percentage of your crop? Have you made any kind of estimate? Um, well, last time when there was a problem um, getting access to overseas workers, we lost 250 tonnes, which just um, were left rotting on the ground. 250 tonnes of strawberries? Yes. That's yeah. a heap of strawberries. That's a lot it? of strawberries. But we're not alone. You know, going forward, the cherry growers and the nectarine growers, they also are really spring crops and they will have the same problems. OK, so have, so have you been talking to Immigration New Zealand and the government and what kind of response have you had? Who have you been talking to? Hey, I've talked to any of them that will listen and we have been trying for months to sort this out because if we don't sort it out then it's, it's a problem for the economy here as well. I mean, you know, <laughs> we can't have a situation where the horticultural industry cannot operate, and I think that's where we're heading. You're serious? The, the crisis is that great? It is that great because you can't take people out of offices and, and sedentary-type jobs and ask them to pick. It requires quite a degree of fitness to be able to do that work. We've all got lots of work for packers and that's, that's the sort of work that's good for people coming out of a um, non-picking environment. But unfortunately, you do need fitness to spend a day bending or climbing up a ladder with a, a big pack on your back and picking fruit. So this is skilled in particular work, right? Correct. OK. Uh, so historically, a lot of your pickers have come from Samoa, haven't they? Correct. OK, and Samoa hasn't had a single case of COVID. Not a single. Not one. Not one. So what you're saying is, goodness gracious, if we're talking bubbles, surely this is a country we can make this work with. Well, we, we would like to bring um, uh, some of our Samoan workers back there's a repatriation flight going up to Samoa on the 30th of this month. If we could bring our team back on that and bring them into our quarantine facility, test it again before they come, and we're quite happy to follow any procedure that government will require us to meet. So you have dorms, you can provide a facility where they would stay together, they wouldn't go into town, although the risk is low because there are no cases in Samoa, but we've got to play by the rules. So you're saying you can make this work? We can make that work. We've got a facility set in an exclusive area of 10 acres 
and it's easily able to be patrolled. We would follow every single rule that was put in front of us, but nobody wants to give us the rules and nobody wants to talk to us. And no question, MSD have been very clear. They can't help us with pickers. And we want to keep our Kiwis employed. So, our... so when you're talking about MSD, that they can't help you with Kiwi pickers. Why can't you get Kiwi pickers? Because of the physical nature of it. Uh, yes, we can get pickers and we value our Kiwi pickers, but we can't get enough. And I understand why. It's not for everybody. What do you what do you what do you pay? I, I, Paul Hobbs did a story on uh, on six o'clock, which you were in, where you sort of signalled this in September, yeah. and there was a little bit of a backlash saying it's tough work and it's poorly paid. So what do you pay? Okay, well nobody earns less than minimum wage, and on the other side of the coin, anybody who produces a reasonable result will get paid bonus, and that bonus can be up to about thirty six dollars an hour. Right. So the minimum is the is the minimum wage is the bare minimum, and if you are a good, productive, and effective picker, you can possibly even double the minimum. Correct. You can make a good wage. But it's tough work, isn't it? Absolutely. And the thing about strawberries, bless them, is they're on the ground. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, it's so a long way down. Right. So the group, the people who come in from Samoa and elsewhere in the Pacific, are highly skilled and really efficient and productive. Well, that's the way they live their lives. The people we bring, they they are actually growing crops. There. So they're fit, they understand the work and they're experienced. Right. So Grant Robertson is going to join us, Finance Minister. What do you want to say to him? He's going to be on in about half an hour from now. What point do you want to make to the government? Well, we, the horticultural industry are critical for the New Zealand economy and we want to provide jobs for as many Kiwis as we can. If we can't get harvested, then we can't provide jobs. That's that's the first thing. And the other thing is if, if he doubts what I'm saying, that there is not an availability of pickers, then please, as I've invited many times before the ministers, come and visit us and we can show you the evidence of the problem. We are very close by. We're five minutes from the airport, our pack house. We would like to him to come and visit so we can show him the problem. Right, so just to go back to that staggering figure you gave us earlier, what sort of tonnage do you think is at risk at the moment? Well, at least that, if not more, because... And what was that? 250 tonnes. But I'm not alone. I'm, the vegetable growers in South Auckland have exactly the same problem, and Far North. The cherry growers in central Otago, the nectarine growers, they relied on the past on backpackers. There are no backpackers to speak of. So we all need help, not just us. We will raise it with the Finance Minister in about 30 minutes. Francine Perry from uh, Perry's Berries, thank you so much for joining thank us this you. morning. We really appreciate it. 250 tonnes of strawberries. I love strawberries. Um, we would, if you are a grower in those regions that Francine was talking about, we'd love to hear from you. Breakfast.tvnz.co.nz. Mm. How acute is the labour shortage where you are? Doesn't matter where you're in Central Hawke's Bay, obviously a lot of fruit and veggies grown there. We'd love to hear from you. Please email us.